So in this problem, we're looking to calculate the line integral over the vector field x, y, y minus x, over the path that is the triangle connecting 1, 0, 0, 1, and negative 1, 0 in a counterclockwise direction. So here's our triangle, and to orient this, we're going counterclockwise, so this will be our direction. Now, in this problem, we're going to need to break this up into three separate paths. C1, C2, and we'll call this last one C3. And we're going to need to parametric equations for each path, and then we'll do the integral on each path. Let's find a set of parametric equations for each path, and then we'll calculate the line integrals on each path. So C1 is this path that goes across the bottom, so we're going from negative 1, 0 to 1, 0. So we can see the y is staying the same. And what happens with x is it goes from negative 1 to 1. So one easy way of doing this is we can let x of t equal t, y of t equal 0, and this is for t going from negative 1 to 1. There will always be an infinite amount of ways to parameterize curves, so you pick whatever is easiest for you. For C2, so what I would notice here is that x goes from 1 to 0, and I'm going to set up my parametric equations so that it starts after here. So I'm going to use the interval from t starting at 1. So one way of doing this is let x of t be 2 minus t, and we're going to let t go from 1 to 2. And we can check this out really quickly. When t is 1, x is 1. When t is 2, x is 0. For our y, y is going from 0 up to 1, so it has a slope of 1. t, but if we just did t, t, y would be going from 1 to 2, so we'll back it up 1. Now y is going from 0 to 1. On our path c3, now x is going down by 1, and y is also going down by 1. So they both have a negative slope, a negative slope of 1. And we're going to let t go from 2 to 3. So to compensate for that, we're going to have x start at 2 and then go down by t. Again, you can check it very easily. Just plug in your endpoints, make sure they match with those endpoints. y is really similar, except needed to start 1 higher, so 3 minus t. And there's our set of parametric equations for each curve. Now we need to do our line integral on each curve. So let's start by setting up what this is going to look like. So over our path C, f dot dr is going to be our vector field. So x, y, y minus x, and then dotted with dx, dy. Now we're going to do this in each case. So if we're on C1, right here, x of t is t, y of t is 0. So we're going to plug those in for the x's and y's. Our limits are our limits on t, so negative 1 to 1. Now plugging in, we're going to plug in t for x, 0 for y. 0 for y, t for x, and that gets dotted with the derivatives of each of these. x prime is 1, y prime is still 0, and then I just like to put the dt there at the end. So in this case, this, this component of our vector field is 0, dotted with 1 is 0, so we end up with negative 1 to 1 of 0, and again, this is negative t times 0, so plus 0 dt. So on c1, we're getting that the uh, line integral is 0. And let's take a look at the plot. So here's the plot. Here's our vector field in blue, and then here's our path. Notice what's going on on c1. Our vector field 
is perpendicular to our path of motion, so it's making sense that we're getting zero. Now let's go on to C2. So making these substitutions, once again, our limits will be one to two. And now we have to put in our parameterization for X and Y. So we have two minus T times T minus one. That's our X, Y. And then plugging in for Y, we have T minus one minus two minus T. And that is our vector field with our parameterization plugged in. That's going to get dotted with the derivatives, which x prime of t is negative 1, y prime of t is positive 1, dt. And then we'll do, we'll do some multiplication in here and then do our dot product. So we have 1 to 2 of t squared plus 3t minus 2, comma, negative 3 plus 2t, dotted with negative 1, 1 dt. So now we do the dot product and simplify, and we get the integral from 1 to 2, t squared minus t minus 1 dt. Doing our antiderivative, we have t cubed over 3 minus t squared over 2 minus t from 1 to 2. Plugging in our limits, we're going to get 8 thirds minus 4 halves minus 2. That's plugging in the 2 minus 1 third minus 1 half minus 1. I'm going to start by combining like terms. So I've got an 8 thirds minus a 1 third is 7 thirds. Here I've got a negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Minus a negative 1 is a negative 3. And then we have plus a half. So let's find a common denominator so we can add these together. That'll be in sixths. So we have 14, 6 minus 18 sixths plus 3 sixths equals negative 1 sixth on our path C2. Once again, if we look at the plot, C2 is here. Let's zoom in a little. This arrow we can see is going to the right, which is a little bit against our path of motion. So it makes sense that we're getting a negative along that piece. Once we come around here on C3, notice we're also starting to go against our vector field and it's not perpendicular. So we're gonna expect a negative value on C3 as well. So C3, now we're gonna be doing the integral from two to three. We're gonna be plugging in this for our vector field. Two minus T times 3 minus t, comma, and then it's y minus x. So 3 minus t minus 2 minus t. And now with our parameterization, we have to put in the derivative of our parameterization. So negative 1, negative 1, dt. So doing a little bit of uh, simplification, we're going to get 6 minus 5t plus t squared, and then this one, because the t's are going to cancel, actually just simplifies down to 1, dotted with negative 1, negative 1, dt, doing the dot product, gives us 2 to 3 of negative 7 plus 5t minus t squared, dt, so then we take our antiderivative, so minus 7t plus 5 halves t squared minus t cubed over 3 from 2 to 3, and we can plug in our values. So plugging in the 3 gives us negative 7 times 3 plus 5 halves times 3 squared minus 3 cubed over 3. 
minus, now we'll plug in 2, negative 7 times 2 plus 5 halves times 2 squared minus 2 cubed over 3. So we have negative 21 plus 45 halves minus 27 over 3, which reduces down to 9, minus a negative 14 plus 20 over 2, which is 10, minus 8 thirds. So we can get these whole numbers combined. Uh, we've got negative 21 minus 9 is negative 30. Plus 14 is negative 16. Minus 10 is a negative 26. And plus 45 over 2 plus 8 thirds because it's minus a negative 8 thirds. We need to get these all in terms of sixths. So we have negative 156 sixths plus 135 sixths plus 16 sixths. So we take the negative 156, if we add 16, that's negative 140, plus another 135, leaves us with a negative 5, 6. So we have to add the contributions from C1, C2, and C3 to get our total line integral, which is going to be 0 plus a negative 1, 6 plus a negative 5, 6 or negative 1. So once again, bringing up our image, as we said before, negative made sense because along C1 we saw that it was 0 because it's perpendicular. Along C2 we see we're going against it but not strong against it, but then over here on C3 the vector field's getting stronger as well as going against our path of motion, so negative makes sense.